Hi everybody, I've been doing some research and I've been looking at the RDS license versus the VDA license and some things have jumped off, jumped off the page at me and I wanted to share this with you. So I want to start this conversation by talking about the RDS license. For RDS, this is your typical scenario. You have a Windows server and you have multiple people logged in to use this server. The way this works is basically these users create content, it talks to a driver of some sort, the driver spits out something to a, uh, to a protocol which goes over the network to the endpoint devices. Now, these endpoint devices can actually be all sorts of different operating systems, and we don't change the way that we license it. In the end, Windows Server needs to have a license. We need to install Remote Desktop Services, or RDS, and then we're going to get an RDS CAL for each remote connection, regardless of the type of device that's being connected to it. Now let's switch gears and talk about VDA. Let's start this conversation by talking about typical physical computer. In a physical computer, if I wanted to, I could drop a hypervisor on it and I could allow someone to connect to their physical computer remotely. Uh, Citrix Zen Client is pretty much what this is. Zen Client plus remote PC would be how it works in a Citrix world. This is fine. It doesn't really require any special licensing. But as soon as I add a second Windows box on top of that same hypervisor, I now need special licensing. And this is fair because in the first example, I had one PC with one copy of Windows run, running on top of it. Well, that's going to be covered with its standard OEM license. In this license, I ha or in this scenario, I have two copies of Windows, but I wouldn't necessarily have two licenses. So Microsoft deserves to be paid here. And so the way that you can license this is with the VDA license. But where it gets really interesting is when we do this at scale. In the picture I'm here, I'm showing four remote connections with the monitors on the right, and I'm showing 12 different Windows operating systems on the left. Now, logically, I would think I've got 12 operating systems on the left here, so I should license 12 copies of Windows. However, that's the, not the way it works. The way Windows and VDA works is I actually license the endpoint device. So the type of device that my user is connecting into is actually extremely important in this scenario. So the top three being non-Windows operating systems, they absolutely must have a VDA license. However, the bottom one being Windows, it may or may not need VDA. If this bottom client is Windows and it's already covered by Software Assurance or SA, I don't need the VDA license. However, if it's not covered by SA, I will need the VDA license. So this could actually be beneficial. In some scenarios, you could have literally one person with 100 VMs. I have no idea why you would want to do that, but you could. Um, however, the reverse could also be non-beneficial when you have users with multiple devices, which is where a different license, CSL, comes in. But I'm not getting into all of that in today's call. The, the point of this is to show there's major licensing differences between these two scenarios. So once again, I just want to recap. With RDS, Microsoft doesn't care about the endpoint device. I just license the connection. With Windows 7 and VDA, it, Microsoft does care about the endpoint device. And I have to try to audit something that is extremely difficult to audit, which is what devices are my users using on a daily basis. Furthermore, the way devices are used today are interchangeably. Users may use five different devices within a single day. So when you have a license that is tied to a device, you exponentially make this thing more expensive to run versus the RDS license, which does not care. Anyway, I hope that helps with a high-level overview of these two licenses. Thank you.